Uh, I don't know how many of y'all keeps up with prophetic events and uh, things that's taking place today. But uh, you may remember that in, uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a lot of talk going on that in September of that year, Jesus was going to return. We did a whole lot of programs on it, talked about it a lot. Well, they've done that two or three times and they're doing it again. I don't know how simple, how much more simple the Bible could put it than this. And please listen to these words. No man knoweth the hour or the day, not even the sun. No man knoweth the day or the hour, not even the sun, not even Jesus knew the day or the hour of his return. Now y'all do know and you can confirm with an amen that is straight scripture. Amen. I mean, I ain't reading it to you right now out of the book, but that is straight scripture. No man knoweth the day or the hour, not even the sun. Now that simply means what it says, and it seems as though that we shouldn't have to waste even the time that I've already wasted on this particular subject. No man knoweth the day or the hour, not even the sun. But these feast days that's coming up uh, here in September, Jesus is going to return again. And people's minds are now being troubled in one way or the other and calling up and saying, have you heard, have you heard, have you heard? Jesus is coming in September and they've mathematically proved it and they've went through the feast days and they've found and decoded things in the Bible. Listen. Any time this stuff starts, number one, Jesus is not bound to, I am not bound to, you are not bound to any of the feast days of the Bible. The feast days was the Old Testament ceremonial laws. Paul said in the book of Galatians, I am afraid of you because you observe days and months. If you return unto any portion of the law, Paul said you must then fulfill it all, which of course you can't do. That's why Jesus had to come. And as many of you as return unto the law, Galatians, ye are fallen from grace. So there is nothing about Rosh Hashanah or any other feast day nor can any man calculate on a computer nor find codes and decode the Bible and find out Jesus is coming September the 14th or the 28th or any other day. It is pure nonsense. Please do not fall for this stuff. And any time, if you're watching on television, if you're watching, listening, any time anybody who is preaching the gospel, any time anybody is selling anything or asking for money, automatically take what they say with a grain of salt. Could be telling you the truth. But if they selling something or begging for money, first thing you do, don't trust them. Don't trust nothing they say until it is verified and proved scripturally. Amen. Which means then you may have to do a little Bible work yourself. As you are commanded to do, go home and search the things out that you have been told, the Bible tells us, so that you'll know if what you heard was true or false. We're not the first people who has been being promised and told that God's coming back and Jesus is fixing to come back and troubled the souls of a lot of people. No, no. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the heavens. The same devils are alive now as was alive in Jesus' day, in Paul's day, in Elijah's day, and in Adam's day. It's the same bunch of devils doing exactly the same thing. So they're just going to repeat the same mess over and over and over and over and over. If we as a church and if we as a body of Christ around the world would actually listen to a Bible preaching preacher, get the word in us, then we could stop all this nonsense in a heartbeat. 
but the deceiver plays on the ignorance of the deceived. We're not the first people to deal with this, and I want to show it to you in the scripture, and hopefully it'll show you some other things as well. Verse 1 says, now we beseech you, brethren, beseech, that means I am expressing a great need for you to listen to what I'm telling you. It ain't just, now listen brothers, it is I beseech thee. Be, I beseech thee is akin to I am begging you. I am begging you to listen to me. I beseech you brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering to gather unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Now, when you break these scriptures down, Paul is telling the church at Thessalonica, I know that many of you are being troubled. I know that many of you are being mentally afflicted. It's happening by spirit. So see, brothers and sisters, if you have the gift of discerning of what? Spirits. It's what the Bible says. The discerning of spirits. Do you know how many times a spirit has troubled you in your lifetime? Oh, it's countless. Do you know how many times you've let somebody in your world, let somebody in your life shortly thereafter, it became tormenting hell and you wished I never would have done that. Inside that human being that has stowed your peace, took your peace, is a spirit working. You could have discerned the spirit before you brought it in. Is all it takes for a demon to smile at you? Is that all it takes for you to believe that's a good man. That's a good woman. Is all it takes is for him to be pretty? Is that all that it takes for you to believe, oh, that's the right one? You can see how much foolishness and nonsense it is to judge as the Bible commands us not to anything by appearance. There is something deeper than anything that appears. There is something behind it. Hey, this preacher talk, this is true talk. There's something behind it. The flesh can smile. But what is going on inside that head? Some people will smile at you, won't they? While they're trying to take you, won't they? Going back to the salesman. He practices his smile while he ain't there to do nothing but get your money. That's the only reason he's there. Your hand, his hand shakes. He don't care how you doing. He don't care how your day's been. And he ain't smiling at you because he's happy to see you. It is all an outward appearance. Internally, he is there to get your money. And the moment he finds he can't get your money, he is going to leave. Won't be no more handshakes. Won't be no more smiles. He will just be gone. In spirit... Can you imagine how many problems we would have solved in our lives that truly and greatly troubled us? Had we been able to discern the spirit? And he said, not by spirit only, but by word. Their minds are being greatly troubled by spirit, by word. Wouldn't it be wonderful for us to see past and beyond the words that are coming out of somebody's mouth? Amen. Oftentimes, words are nothing but that of which disguises what is true in a human being's mind. You got to get past the words, the smiles. Everything is based upon a motive. What is the motive? What do they need? What do they want? Why are they here? If they are begging for money, I don't trust them. 
if they are in the gospel especially selling I don't trust them the reason why I don't trust them is because the Bible the Bible the Bible warned us that in the last days it said these words they shall make merchandise of you why don't you believe that so anybody who is selling from the pulpit anybody who is preaching the gospel and selling at the same time what can you call it but that they are merchandising you this ain't hobby lobby brother that you walked in i ain't got nothing for sale in them your mind is being troubled paul says because of spirit your mind is being troubled because of words and as letters being sent from us. They were sending out letters during that day. History shows. They were show sending out letters, these false prophets. Ain't nothing one of them won't do. There is nothing one of them won't do. The slimiest trash walks this planet is a false prophet. There ain't nothing they won't do. They were sending out letters to the churches saying that Jesus is fixing to come. So people was getting rid of all of their goods. People was getting rid of their houses. People was getting rid of their animals because Jesus was coming. Well, some of them was waking up to find they just lost everything and it ain't happening. So Paul is telling them not to be concerned and not to be troubled with these liars and these false prophets and he says then in verse 3 let no man deceive you because that's what it's all about it's all about deception let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first so Paul is now comforting and strengthening the church by telling them what God has said. That day, the coming of the Lord, shall not and will not come until there is a falling away. Now the word falling away in that passage of scripture is very important. It means apostasy. There will be an apostasy. Before that day comes, there will be an apostasy. There will be a falling away. The word apostasy and falling away carries within its definition a divorce. In other words, God will divorce the church. The church as a whole, Laodicea, the last day church age, is going to begin to commit spiritual harlotry. That means they're going to mingle in the world. They're going to mingle in with the church. They're going to mingle in Hinduism. They're going to mingle in Buddhism. They're going to make a world church, you know, where we all get along and we can all accept one another. It doesn't matter what your religion is. We just need to be one. That's Antichrist. So the church is going to adulterate itself. It's going to start teaching paganism as Bible. And there's going to come a falling away. An apostasy. As people's going to leave the faith, assuming they end the faith, but they're going to leave the faith. And the Bible says God is going to give them a written bill of divorcement. So he's telling the church, be not troubled by the deceivers that has come in with their words with their letters and with all of the other nonsense in their spirit. Be not deceived by them. For here is the signs that has to happen before that day can take place. There is going to be a falling away of the church and the man of sin, the Antichrist, be revealed. Well, now, brothers and sisters, today we are certainly in the falling away. I cannot say that God as a whole right now has divorced the church. But I can tell you right now without question, 
the marriage ain't good right now. The church is receiving now what God told his church to never receive and in fact to withdraw yourself from it. But now we're letting it in. You see, the falling away in the apostasy of the church has to take place before Antichrist can be revealed. It has to take place before Antichrist can come to power. The reason for that is, you see, the church is the most powerful institution on earth. Or shall we say, the body of Christ is the most powerful force on this planet. The body of Christ. You and me. The Bible says you have become a citizen. It uses that word. The Bible says that you have become a citizen of heaven. This world and this planet, literally, scripturally, hath no jurisdiction over you at all. It's not the government of the United States that has messed everything up. It is the church adulterating itself, leaving the word of God, not teaching the people the true word of God. The discerning of spirits is the reason for the rapid immorality you see today. And used to, when we talked about rapid immorality, we talked about men chasing women. Women chasing men. But that's not what we're talking about today. You know the filth, the mess, you know. Had the church of the living God remained secured in the spirit, where the spirit still moved and it was in the air, and the word of God was taught to generation after generation after generation, you would have a people who was strong enough to resist and remove anybody that promoted that trash. But when you water down the gospel, when you adulterate the gospel, the only agency and the only force on this planet that was ever put here to teach right and wrong is us. God didn't put that in the hands of government. He gave that to us that we would clearly lay down the lines of what was permissible and not permissible, what was right and what was wrong, what was holy, what was unholy, in the eyes of God, not man. The money whores came along and merchandised the gospel and they let one generation move after the other until finally the generation came in who don't know a single word of the Bible and a generation who believes that all there is to do and what we're supposed to do is to go to church. All of this mess that you happen, see happening, all of it, all of it is God's word coming to pass just as God said that it would. Now, the Bible tells us here, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away, and that man of sin be revealed for the son of perdition. The word perdition means destruction. He's going to destroy. He's a destroyer. Those that's of him are destroyers. Everything they touch, they destroy. Nothing survives them. You look at this Democratic Party. Maybe I might lose a friend or two. My job is to tell you the truth. And if you can't see the plain and obvious truth, you're blind and you need my help. No human being can be a Christian and support an organization that does not believe in God. No human being can be a Christian who supports those who with force is forcing your children to be cut up, turned into another sex. There is no Christian that can support any group that legalizes and ordains Man marrying a man. You cannot be a Christian, brothers and sisters. There's some fine lines we can walk on, understand that. But brother, when you're talking about taking a baby at six years old because the baby's able to tell you if it's a boy or a girl, and you go in and feed it hormones, 
and you cut his private parts off that is not just a beast that is what the bible says is a brute beast made to be destroyed and it is the policy of an entire political order in this country right now it's damnable and hellish and somebody said well you ought not preach on that stuff you're going to lose some folk You can look in here and tell I ain't been trying to keep people. I want people. I love people. And I'd love for the church, I'd love for the church to be slammed full. I'd love it more than anything in the world. But the one thing I love more than that, I ain't compromising the truth for nobody and for nothing. It's like my daddy said a long time ago, everything I got's for sale but me. Amen. 